Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. Two years ago around this time, a hashtag was created by a certain someone. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you've heard of him or not, he's a, he's a, he's a kind of a small channel. Uh, in fact, I don't even think they exist anymore. Does, does, it, does it still exist? Does that channel still exist? Does that channel still exist? I, I don't know, I can't be bothered to look it up. Anyways, his name was BeastMo230, with a space between the beast and the mode. You know, that guy, Squidward on a chair, him. Anyways, so this guy, Mr. Mo230, nice hair. He decided to bestow a gift upon the SR community, a hashtag known as the Beast Modes SR Contest, with no spaces this time. As with any contest, there were rules to be followed. You had to have Vegas, and you had to know what you were doing with it. All right, we're not looking for poses out here. We want the real deal. Okay, and we definitely don't want no pixie tracker peasants coming in this pristine chapel and dirtying the floor with their 8-bit pre-rendered samples, now do we? No! Blech! Disgusting! Get that out of here! Oh, oh, and don't even get me started on the untouchables that were the kind masters and the power directors. Every time that program is mentioned, an angel dies. No, none of that mobile shit. We want Vegas remixers only. All right, you can't just you can't just go and get some McDonald's and make an entry at the same time. What do you think this is? Some kind of some kind of ragtime mom and pop shop? No, this is a five star high production establishment we're running here. Okay, serious business. All right, this is some real VIP shit we're talking about here. So much so that only 19 people managed to get in. Okay, this hashtag only deserved the bestest of the best of the bestness of the bested. So how the fuck did Tila Sar get it? Today I'm going to look at all the entries for the Beast Modes SR contest and decide who, in my opinion, really deserved the title of the winner of the Beast Modes SR contest. Because you have to remember, just because a product has a famous name on it, doesn't automatically make it good. I mean... Just look at YouTuber merch. So the way I'm going to rate these entries is by three categories. And they are, in no particular order, visuals, audio, and creativeness. You know, in terms of samples, sources, space choice, and custom patterns. As well as bonus points for thumbnails and watermarks. Each entry can get a top score of 10 from each category and can achieve the plausible perfect score of 30, excluding the bonus points. Do I think that one of these can do it? Well, let's find out. We'll start with the one that was dubbed the official winner, Sprocket's Entry. Uh, it is good, but it falls under the issue of the backing track problem, where it's no BGM, right? So you're going to need a little more than just a baseline pitch package to keep it from sounding empty. But some of the extra pitches become part of the backing track, and what I mean by that is that they're really quiet, and as a result, it just sounds like it's not even there. You can't, you can't pick it out from the crowd, if you will, and this makes it look like you're just putting visuals in there for no reason, and you might as well just put the BGM in there anyway. For example, in this, the side lead, the top right window, and these chords down here are inaudible. What are they doing here? Can't hear them. But of course, there are other parts of a remix where the backing track problem doesn't affect its audibility, and it's just a matter of turning that shit up more. Like the first hi-hat. The most common issue with remixes these days is that there's no first hi-hat. This is no different. Another issue that really grinds my gears is when the bass doesn't have a black and white filter, because then I can't tell if it's a lead or a bass, especially when it's quiet, as with this. I mean, I can hear it in the intro, but that's because nothing else is playing. And instead of having a black and white filter, it has this motion blur thing, which was a thing for a while. Remember that? That thing that never looked good from the start, ever? To wrap up the cons on this, the kick needs like one more decibel on it, the second hi-hat sounds like a sniff and not a tish, so it doesn't have as strong as a punch, the source and bass are ordinary as crap, the top right window isn't flush against the corner, and the freestyle window doesn't overlap anything, so why is it smaller than everything else? Now it does sound like I'm just ripping into this thing, but let me be clear, I do really like this. The pain and chorus is the best part of this entire thing, the post madness chorus quote changes fit really well. The vibrato sound cool, the VFX on the awesomenesses are well done, the leaf sample sounds the best out of everything, and the snare isn't fake. 
You know how some snares sound exactly the same across different remixes? That shit really annoys me, and I'm really glad this doesn't do that. I mean, it, I mean it's, it's probably not fake, but I don't really know what else to call it. So, in conclusion, for Max Suck a Dick Sparta Calypso Remix by Sprocket, audio, 8 out of 10. I would give it 7, but the pan and chorus is just that good. And overall, this is really good. It just has that backing track problem. Visuals, 5 out of 10. It's default, so it's just straight down the middle for points. I mean, there are keyframes and the plugins are cool, but for all intents and purposes, this is default. Creativeness, 5 out of 10. Like I said, the painted chorus is freaking revolutionary, I love it, but there really isn't anything else to this. No custom patterns, no auto-tune chorus, freestyles aren't anything special, and you have to overuse source and bass, so... There's no thumbnail or watermark, so I can't give bonus points, and if this is a thumbnail, it isn't unique at all. Total score, 18 out of 30. Like I said, this is good, great even, but there's still a lot to be desired. OMG MLP source ah! Okay, okay, but but on a serious note, I am gonna have to take off points because MLP is pretty overused. And so is the bass, kind of, but like this is the best bass ever, so uh... So this is more on the simple side, it's pretty cool. There's no drums, which annoys me more than it should. There's only two pitches, both are completely unedited and lack in volume, especially the rhythm. Like, if the lead is playing with the rhythm, the rhythm goes quiet, and also in the dun-dun, the rhythm sample is the bass, and I really wish the bass was used more. It sounds great. Almost as great as the final epicness. That shit sounds fucking phenomenal. Some of the freestyle samples are unbalanced, some are a little too quiet, some are too loud. I also could have done without the extended final chorus sample. Like, it, it, it could have just been the scream without the preceding energy beams. The reversed chorus flipping is kind of weird. Like, the first half flips, but the second half doesn't. It makes it look really odd. Not as odd as the text, though. I, uh, I didn't realize we were in 2009 here. But you know what does look good? The 3x3 layout. You don't see that too often anymore. So, in conclusion for Sparta Remix, MLP, EG, Russian, Midnight Sparkle, but I do now, Sparta Midnight Sparkle Mix, <gasps> by AJ92, Japanese translation here, I think. Audio, 6 out of 10. Only two unedited pitch samples, it's very basic, but I'm probably gonna get this stuck in my head for sure. Shit, this might even be the first MLP remix to be added to my Sparta playlist. Visuals, 5 out of 10. Straight down the middle. Good old simple default. Creativeness, 6 out of 10. Chorus freestyles are plentiful, epicnesses are good, but nothing really out there. Basic patterns all around. The bass is awesome though, so two extra points. And we got a watermark! Let's go! It's a name tucked in the corner, the best kind. And, I don't know if this is intentional or not, but the colors of it fit in really well with the source, so it's pretty cool. So yeah, two bonus points for the watermark. Unfortunately, this has the same issue as Calypso for the thumbnail, so that's all it gets. Total score, 19 out of 30. This goes to show that sometimes less is more, because this is a freaking bot. So let me start off by saying this bass is the best part about this. I've never heard of it before, and I'm about to give all the creativity points for that. Other than that, though, this is pretty... eh. I mean, at a listening glance, if that makes sense, this ain't too bad, but once you start digging, you realize just how much needs work. For example, there are clicks in this. Both sample clicks and Vegas clicks. Unlike sample clicks, Vegas clicks can't be avoided sometimes. Plus, it only happens once, so it's all good. The double chorus sampling, you know, this pattern, that could be a lot better here. You got a cookie cutter awesomeness, that's pretty cool even though there are a couple of visual errors in it. It's still interesting seeing that in this visual style, which, by the way, I call Tic Tac, because the negative space when all nine windows are on screen looks like a Tic Tac toe board. Uh, I wish the second lead would flip more consistently in the madness. Like, I, like, I see what he's doing, but he could have easily flipped around the event attributes, no extra charge. You can tell the TV sim effect was put on the base timeline events and not the track, which makes it appear glitchy, which I personally don't like the look of. 
Speaking of the bass track, it doesn't follow the BGM in the Madness. Now some of you might be saying, what's the difference between custom patterns and not following the BGM? Custom patterns are unique and still follow the BGM. Not following the BGM is when you take a pre-existing pattern and paste it somewhere it doesn't belong. Another example of this is when a sample stops playing even though the track is associated with continues playing in the BGM. This does both. And the bass needs more volume, but not as badly as the lead. That gets jammed out by everything. Maybe the bass and lead can get some volume from the kick, cause that definitely needs to come down some. Oh, and the chorus triplets? Also, the vibrato kinda sucks. Sounds like the way I used to do it. Squeaky and annoying. Oh, and guess what? Remember that fake snare thing I was talking about? This has that. That thing. Yeah. So, in conclusion for Blossom just said that Sparta Onagaku Rim. Wait. Bruh, you fucking misspelled the base name. Good job. Sparta Ongaku Remix by Thario. Audio, 4 out of 10. It's not awful, but there's like so much room for improvement. Like, I, I can't even say I have a favorite sample out of this. Visuals, 6 out of 10. The Tic Tac visual is a nice change, but I bet you there are people that would argue that Tic Tac is just 4x4 default, but if that were the case, the epicness would be like between the lead and chords, or like to the side next to the lead, and the lead would move over, and the two windows on the side would move up some so that they were touching the windows on top, but they don't, so it's Tic Tac. Creativeness, mm, 4 out of 10, and that's mainly from the bass choice. It's got that fucking snare thing, no customization at all, and Powerpuff Girls, which is also fairly overused. But we got our first thumbnail! We got a nice soft bluish glow for the perimeter. Very nice. There's no text, which is a pet peeve of mine, but I'll let it slide. And no watermark, so no points. Total score, 16 out of 30. To me, this is like a beginner's remix. Like, this is something you'd see you're starting to improve comments under. And you can take that however way you want. Alright, lots of good things to start off with here. The source is very creative. I don't think I've ever seen a WarioWare remix before. This is the first symbol sighting in this review. And we got some custom drums and pitch patterns, so much points for that. And the snare, combined with the second hi-hat, is very epic. The sample switching and the epicness can take it by surprise if you're not ready for it, but I didn't say that was bad. My favorite part of the whole remix is the beginning, mainly because that's when everything's clear and audible, because once the leads come in, the chords and kick get quiet, and I wish those were turned up more, as well as the post-epicness freestyles. Speaking of, I can't tell if those have autotune chorus or not, because if they do, they definitely need to come up. The first lead drowns them out. You also got the sliding bass, which was also a thing for a while. But the bass gets really quiet at the epicness. I wanna, might want to turn up the volume on that part. It's also the only time I can kind of hear the second bass. See, this is why if you're going to have two basses playing at the same time, they need to sound incredibly different. Like, one Melodyne and one Vocadex. <laughs> but at least I can still hear the first bass outside of that. We got another inaudible first I had. Can't hear it. And, also, we got another one of those overused basses. That's great. But other than that, everything else is pretty good. So, in conclusion for No BGM, WWG, My Creator Was You, Sparta Tone Remix by TDSTR, audio, 7 out of 10. We have the same backing track issue again, but other than that, it's a clean remix. Visuals, 5 out of 10. Again, default dance. Creativeness, 7 out of 10. The custom drums and patterns are wonderful, but the mainstream bass makes this lose a couple points. Can't give any points for the thumbnail or watermark. I mean, there's a Profecia gaming watermark, but uh, you're not Profecia, TDCR. You're you. Total score, 19 out of 30. Despite the high score I've given this, this was really hard to get through, to review. I, I don't know why, but I personally just can't bring myself to like this remix. And I hate that. When I know something's good, but I can't enjoy it, it's annoying. Okay, I don't care what no one says, this bass is good. 
I haven't made a C remix since my uncollab, and this is probably going to be the base I use for when I next do it. So this remix here, I already have high hopes for it, because we finally have an audible first hi-hat. Congratulations! Come on down! Actually, don't, because you also have the fake snare issue. So sit your ass down. Yeah, it's got a fake snare, but it does have a nice sounding kick. I mean, I can hear it, but I still would have liked to see it turned up just a little. My favorite sample is the bass. I love the way it sounds, and the triplets before the final epicness was very shinkster of you. The chords are a little quiet, but they're not as quiet as the first lead. Which is interesting, because in the beginning, it sounds like it will be the other way around. That the lead would be more prominent than the chords, but no. And can I just say, I feel like there was a missed opportunity for autotune chorus with some of these samples. But of course, just because an idea sounds good in concept doesn't mean it will in execution. And check this out! We have another new visual style! Shadows! Yay! Windows are kind of tiny, but whatever. So, in conclusion for KO, I'm not sure it was on purpose or not, Sparta NOS V2 Remix by JVids24. Audio, 8 out of 10. I actually really like this remix. My least favorite part of the whole thing is the madness. Uh, I gotta take some points off for the quieter pitches and fake snare, but overall, this is really nice. I'm definitely putting this in my playlist. Visuals, 7 out of 10. I like the moving awesomeness windows, but one part about the visuals that irks me a little is the fact that some windows overlap. Like, when the second lead comes in, it's in the spot of the freestyle, and if they're both playing at the same time, the freestyle moves to another spot that was also taken by another window. I, I, I never liked that kind of thing. Like, you got the whole screen, use it. Creativeness, 6 out of 10. The source is pretty interesting, but I've seen my fair share of NOS remixes. I'll give it an extra point for the triplets. No bonus points for the watermark or thumbnail. Why is everyone just using these bland-ass screen caps that just look like it's from the video? Total score, 21 out of 30. So far, this has been the most fun to listen to, and is currently my favorite out of the bunch. Holy shit. Okay, um, yeah. Let's start off with some good things. The drums are custom. I am a sucker for drums, custom drums. The snare could be a little louder, but I digress. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I can say about it. I found way more criticisms than anything else, so, um... <sighs> The chorus is terribly unbalanced, I can only hear the first hi-hat if I concentrate really hard, making it essentially inaudible. The leads and awesomeness meld into each other, making it so that the only one that is audible is the top middle lead. The only time I can hear the very top lead is at the end when everything else is off. The madness and dun-dun pattern for the chorus is really weird. I straight up cannot hear the epicness lead no matter how hard I try. The chords and rhythm are quiet, by the way, the rhythm visuals are flipped, and while the chords don't follow the BGM, they aren't custom either. The second bass is quiet. There's Freaking cut off at the end, and judging by these comments, something was in this description that was removed, and I hate when people do that. <sighs> so, in conclusion, for Steen Ham's Sparta Synthetic Remix by Prof. Jason, audio 3 out of 10. It just sounds like there's only drums in a single lead and really loud BGM. Visuals 5 out of 10. The chords and rhythm are very ZGU-ish, but it feels really cramped. Really should have turned the aspect ratio off, would have given himself much more room to work with. Creativeness, 5 out of 10. The custom snare pattern is cool, and according to the comments, it's been a while since someone's used Syntex, so I'll give it points for that. Unfortunately, while Steam Hams is a good meme, literally everyone was doing something with this source. Everything we've seen so far has had at least a basic screenshot as a thumbnail, but this just straight up has nothing. At least we got a watermark, a little picture in the corner. Total score, 15 out of 30. This sounds like something 2017 me would make. Loud as hell, everything blends into one another, it just does not withstand the test of time at all. I mean, this thing is so bad it made me completely overlook the fact that it's a fast remix. This is a fast remix, and I don't like it. This is beyond science. 
And frankly, the whole thing should have been no BGM. At least then it would have sounded a little more tolerable. Alright, so this is a pretty nice remix. Uh, according to the comments, the chords are off, so I guess I have to deduct points for that. I don't know, I think it sounds fine. Could have fooled me. Uh, bass is good, I like the hi-hat patterns. The sentence mixing is pretty good. Uh, the floating visual style is pretty sweet. My only gripe is the third lead and epicness overlap. But, we got auto-tune chorus in the post-madness! <laughs> you know I'm a sucker for that auto-tune chorus. Speaking of the madness though, I feel like the chorus in that could be a little better. You know, do a, do a bit more digging for samples, do a different pattern, something. Maybe just let it be the these guys pattern, or something. Uh, the vibrato's pretty cool, but it starts to suck at the end. And the gross beat? Ugh, more squeaky toy crap. How can y'all think that sounds good? But you know what does sound good though? The second lead sample. That's my favorite out of the whole remix. That's why I feel like it should come up a bit. I'm not really sure what the point of the fade out on the smell sample is. Sounds really weird. Overall, a pretty interesting remix, to say the least. So, in conclusion for Mermaid Man, What Is That Smell, Sparta, Laphamore, Laphamore, Leafy's here, I don't fucking know how to pronounce that, JE Remix slash V2 by the Infi Spartan, audio, 7 out of 10. I actually really like this. I mean, I'm not listening to it over and over again, but it's alright. Some parts do need to come up some, the ending turntabling sucks, and the chords are, I guess, wrong, but... Overall, I, I find this quite enjoyable. Visuals, 8 out of 10. Floating visuals are good, the colored chords and rhythm are nice, but again, the overlapping windows really grind my gears. Creativeness, I don't know, 5 out of 10. I don't really know how overused the Laugh It Up bass is, but I guess the source is pretty interesting. A Spongebob game and not an episode, so that's pretty alright. But no custom patterns as far as I can tell, but we get to give bonus points for both a watermark and a thumbnail! Yay, we're finally getting a real sense of professionalism out here! A picture watermark and a text thumbnail! Four points! Total score, 24 out of 30. It's not my favorite, but this really is decently made. And who knows, maybe it'll grow on me as time goes by. Alright, so... this. I feel like this gets better the more you listen to it. The custom progression and the source get this like all the creativity points. Like seriously, this is epic. The custom King Sparta X pattern is pretty cool, but uh, the kick and rhythm are really quiet. I mean, I can hear the rhythm, but I can't hear the kick past the intro. But they both need some more volume behind them. It's pretty obvious that all the drum samples are completely untouched, especially the snare, and I don't feel like that was a good move. Now, at least I can hear the snare, because once again, we have another inaudible first hi-hat. Come on guys, don't be shy with it. Also, I wish that when the lead layered itself in the dun-dun and the ending, that there would be a visual indicator as well, because I never liked the look of multi-layered audio, but mono-layered visuals. It just comes off as lazy to me. Other than that, I don't really have much else to say. So, in conclusion for Vinny mm, Sparta Remix by Spencer Everly, audio, 6 out of 10. Some parts are really quiet, the drum samples need some EQ work, the chorus is really empty, but this still has a nice charm to it. Visuals, 5 out of 10, default again. Creativeness, 9 out of 10. Unorthodox source, custom no BGM progression, and the only thing that would have made this get the full 10 is if the madness was custom as well. And autotune chorus. Unfortunately, we have no thumbnail or watermark, so that's as high as we're going. Total score, 20 out of 30. I think the chorus quote summarizes how I feel about this remix. Oh, I don't like this. I don't like this one bit. Uh, the only good thing I can say is the source and the bass. Genius Ferrari slaps, and I thought I was the only one that used custom sources for this contest. But now, I have to rip into this thing, and where do I even begin? First off, is there supposed to be vibrato in this? Because every time something goes swirly, it's just silence. Like, like what is that? Why? What happened? And you know what else is silence? Whatever this is. Is it a second lead? Bass? 
I can't tell because A, I can't hear it, and B, there's no black and white filter. And can I just say, what is it with some people not adding a black and white filter to the bass? Like, come on, it's not that hard, people. I know you're not that lazy. But anyway, back to this. We can actually hear the first hi-hat again, but at the cost of the second hi-hat being the same sample, so now it blends into the first hi-hat. The kick sucks, and honestly, it should have been switched with the snare. Speaking of the snare, I really hope that the fact that it goes from 2 and 4 to 1 and 3 is on purpose. Because otherwise, that's just like, it's just come on, man. Also, check this out. Some of the windows aren't even flush against the screen, and I'm just sitting here like, how does that happen? How, how, how does that go unnoticed? You don't see that shit? So, in conclusion for Jesse Awesomeness Spartan slash slash Jesse Fanatic Sparta Guineferino Remix by Mario the Spartan, audio 4 out of 10. The chords are the only thing here that sound good. The drums suck. The chorus is only decent in the dun-dun. The epicness isn't the best. And the vibrato is just not there. Visuals, 5 out of 10. I would take off half a point for the defects, but I'm not doing that, so 5 out of 10, default. Creativeness, 5 out of 10. The custom source is cool, but even though I like Guineferino, it is an overused bass. Not as much as something like Nameless FE or Calypso, but it's no Ongaku or, or one of my bases. There's also no thumbnail or watermark, so total score, 14 out of 30. This isn't good. I believe NPC, or however the fuck you pronounce that, said it best when he said, meh. <laughs> How much you want to bet the symbol sample was the inspo for this entire thing? So, uh, I don't know, this, this is okay, I guess. I mean, the autotune chorus is cool, though I feel like there should be more. Uh, the rhythms are fairly balanced. I do agree with what Useful said about the bass, in that it needs more, well, bass. Unfortunately, we have not one, but two fake snare samples. That's great. Again, calling it fake is probably the worst word to use, but still, you can't deny that it's the same sound over and over again. There's no variety. But anyways, this is another no BGM remix, but it also falls under the backing track problem. The secondary chorus quotes are quiet, the freestyles are quiet, the first chords are quiet, the third lead after the epicness is quiet, the kick needs more volume to it, I straight up can't hear the epicness lead again, when the second lead does that trill thing, it goes quiet, and the hi-hat sounds similar so there's no differentiating between the two when they're both playing. Visually, the second chords look like they were just thrown there. I mean, I see what he was going for, but it doesn't look good. And the first chords window doesn't flip sometimes, which I feel is just laziness. Other than that, somehow everything else is okay. I know I said the kick was a little quiet, but somehow the sample itself is alright. The first lead slides is pretty cool, even though it's the main reason I can't hear anything. The first lead in its entirety, not the slides. Uh, and I think it would have been cool if this ended with the explosion that follows the main quote. So, in conclusion, for V2 Krakatoa Sparta Tone Remix by Full Red, audio, 4 out of 10. To me, this is just kind of boring. At least V1 used a fast bass. And again, the backing track problem is really an issue with these remixes. I shouldn't have to strain my ears to hear something. It should all just come to me naturally. Overall, it's just kind of meh. Visuals, 5 out of 10. Again, if I was doing decimals, it would be 4.5 for the occasional no flips on the first chords, but I'm not doing that, so just 5 out of 10. Creativeness, 7 out of 10. Spongebob and Tone, I see we have arrived at the heart of Overused City. The trills in the second lead are cool, but again, I only know that's there because I can see it. But I do love how customized this is. The drums, the first lead, the multiple chords, it's very nice. We do get to give bonus points for the thumbnail, and I actually wish that Full Red would keep using this style of thumbnail, because it looks cool, and it's unmistakably his. No watermark though, so that sucks. Total score, 18 out of 30. I am very much in agreement with the comments in that this is not Red's best work. It, 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 it has that sound that everyone's trying to mimic, and I hate that. Make your own sound, dammit.
Ugh, BFB. Literally the most overused source in Sparta history. Anyway, aside from that, this is killer. The base is pretty underused from what little research I did. I can hear both hi-hats. In fact, I can hear everything. This is probably the most well-balanced remix we've seen so far. The samples sound great, the freestyles are good. In fact, my only issues with this are the fact that neither of the basses have a filter on them, the second hi-hat doesn't flip even though all the other drums do, and I'm not really sure what this is doing because all I hear is one track. Maybe it's like a makeshift reverb or something, I don't know. So in conclusion for BOMBY, you owe me a BANANA Sparta JSRS V1.5 Remix by A The More. Audio, 9 out of 10. All this needs is autotune chorus and this beat set for the double digits. I'm telling you, this shit sounds great. Visuals, 5 out of 10. Do I really need to explain myself anymore? Creativeness, 6 out of 10. The source is overused as hell, but the bass is good, so extra points. And bonus for the very nice looking thumbnail. I give it 2 extra points, but no watermark. Total score, 21 out of 30. That's another one for my playlist. Very good job on this. Oh, shit. Ongaku again. Hot <laughs> damn, what are the odds? Guess I gotta take off more points from Thario. No, 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 I'm, I'm just playing, I'm playing, I'm not doing that. But this is a lot better than the other Ongaku remix. We have the floating visual style, finally something different. The kick is good, the freestyles are my favorite part. Well, second only to the autotune chorus, of course. The madness cymbal swells are pretty swell, and overall, this is a pretty well-balanced no BGM remix. The Vegas clicks are annoying, but it happens. I would like to know the backstory of why the first lead is all the way down here. And also, we still don't have any bass filters. Come on, you guys! By the way, this remix is on thin ice with that snare. I can't tell if it's fake or not. It almost sounds like it's not, but it could just be because of the second sample. Also, why is it that every fake snare has a visual associated with some sort of liquid? How the hell does that work? I've tried it before, and I've yet to get the same results, so what's the secret? Anyways, I'm getting off topic. Keeping on the theme of the snare, the second sample's ghost notes are really quiet, especially when it doesn't have the first sample backing it up. Another thing that's quiet is the hi-hat. Oh, and this cutoff. Could've just ended with a fade out right after Steven got snapped. So, in conclusion for I Don't Know What You're Talking About, Sparta Ongaku Remix by Curtis Try, audio, 7 out of 10. I like this the same way I've been liking almost everything else so far. It's well made, but I'm not going crazy over it. It's alright. A job well done. Visuals, 7 out of 10. Floating is pretty cool, I wish the drums would flip. And the second bass ought to be with the first bass, but everything else is fine. Creativeness, 6 out of 10. Same as Thario, nothing super out there. Steven Universe is also up there with PPG in terms of usage, but Ongaku is still a pretty interesting bass. And no points for watermark or thumbnail, unfortunately. Total score, 20 out of 30. I don't know what this means, but not bad, Curtis. Not bad at all. Ugh, this guy. Another great dude turns sour. <sighs> okay, so I have an immediate problem with this. No visuals, lazy fuck. And he still felt the need to put a watermark? Like, what? Right. So obviously I can't say a whole lot about the visuals, which means I have a lot to say about the audio. And it sucks. Boy! Especially the Dun Dun chorus. That's probably the worst part of the entire thing. And as a whole, the chorus could be a lot better. Like, the madness samples? Those aren't the best. In fact, the best part to me is when the chorus is not playing, particularly the intro. And furthermore, this isn't the best quote, either. The only good sample in this is the stay one, and I feel like it would have worked better as a freestyle and not the main quote. Also, the kick and snare are weak, and I can't hear the bass. I mean, it's probably there, but just drowned out by everything else. I can't tell it. See, this is the issue with no visual remixes. 
you need to make sure that the audio is incredibly well balanced because you know there's no visual indicator of what's what which is why i get so irate when bass visuals don't have the bw filter not to mention you can easily put fake samples in no visual remixes am i accusing this of having fake samples no i'm just saying stop being lazy there's a reason i made the 450 visual style come on guys i'm on your side here so in conclusion for Tord I'm Here to Stay Sparta Megrim Remix by the motherfucking Chipster Brothers, even though it was only ever one person, audio, 3 out of 10. The only good parts of this are the pitches and hi-hat. Everything else is just ugh, not good. Visuals? Well, no visuals, so no points. Fuck it. Well, I mean, you did take the time to put the text in watermark, so I guess 1 out of 10. Creativeness, 2 out of 10. We got another overused bass, vanilla as fuck remix. Hell, not even the source can save this. You know how many Ed's board remixes I've seen? And I can't tell what kind of samples have been used because I can't see anything. And yeah, the watermark is great, bonus two points for that, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter, does it? Total score, eight out of 30. Just a big fat goose egg on this. Overall, this is incredibly mediocre. Need to take this one back to the jarring board real bad. Zero out of 30, fuck you, I don't need to explain myself to nobody, because I'm an asshole that treats others unjustly around the clock with absolutely, definitely no explanation whatsoever. NEXT! Is what I would say if I was the dickhead everyone says I am. But I'm not. In fact, I'm excited for this. I get to review an original, authentic GT17S remix. This is great. <laughs> Gonna have myself a throwback Thursday. Taking it back to the days when this guy wasn't a lying, promise breaking snake. Anyways, let's go. So we got... Oh. That watermark. Oh, that damn watermark. I love that thing. So good. And the stack GTSE visuals. <laughs> Bro, I'm already having a great time. The visuals in this overall are great. I like the chroma key on the second bass, and there's a... Wait. If that's a bass visual, why is there no filter? Fuck! Yeah, my biggest gripe here are the basses. The first bass is quiet, the second bass has no filter, and the flanger bass sounds awesome, true to classic GT17S. But not only can I not see it all that well, it's a 16th note pattern, and it doesn't 360 flip like the hi-hat. 0 out of 10 inaccurate visual... Okay, I'll stop, sorry. Also, you forgot to turn off the epicness squares at the beginning. <laughs> I can hear the first hi-hat, this is epic, but everything in this corner needs some serious volume. I can only hear the kick when the perk isn't playing, and yet when the perk is playing, I can hardly hear it nor the kick. How the hell? And also, why with the second awesomeness visuals? I'm pretty sure this isn't the only time GT has done this too, and I think it's really lazy. Like, really? You can bother to put TV sim on the first awesomeness, but you can't visually chart the second one? Come on now, stay consistent with it. Another problem I have is the multitude of sample clicks in this. The chorus, the piano lead, my god. But despite all that, this is really well made. He's proud of it, and he should be, because at the end of the day, this hits. The vibrato is my favorite part, and the source is fairly unique. It's more on the overused side, but I still believe that custom sources get such a bad rap, and they should be used more. Especially the ones where the samples have a lot of variety to them. So, in conclusion for Contest Entry, Zoe 13's Custom Sources, Sparta Vector Remix by the late and great GT17S. 17. Se se 17. Se it's se 17! It's 17, you smooth brain plebs! Not 17! I don't care if that's even how he says it! GT17S is dead. <laughs> it's wrong, okay? I mean, you don't see me saying Zori 13 or, or Beastmo 230, what the fuck? It's 17! Jesus! <clears throat> Sorry, lost myself there. As I was saying, audio, 8 out of 10. I had to knock off a few points for the clicks and unbalanced basses and the kick thing, but this is still really good. Definitely putting this in my playlist. Visuals, 8 out of 10. Stack GTSC is such a unique style, and it's really a pity that I'm pretty much the only person that uses it now. Creativeness, 5 out of 10. Zori sources are the most used custom sources out there, and you got Vector as the base, which was overdone to hell. Pretty ordinary stuff, really. But we do get to give points for the best watermark ever. 
Bubble 17S. BB 17S. <laughs> no points for thumbnail, though. Total score, 23 out of 30. I am seriously loving this thing. Pretty impressive for his first vector. Yeah, it's, it's, it's his first vector, guys. This is a monumental moment. GT's first vector. This is epic. Alright, I'm done. <laughs> Yes! First Remix! Yeah! Yeah! I love Fast Remixes! Yeah! Uh, so, yeah. Fast Remix, and I love it. Uh, the remix itself is pretty good. The kick is great. If you couldn't tell by now, I'm very much a connoisseur for drums. Mainly because I'm a drummer. Uh, the multi-source route is an interesting choice, even though I feel like there could have been a bit more to it than what we got. I mean, there could have been a hit, there could have been some percussion, but instead, we got the bass and chords using the same sample. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying, if you're gonna use multi-source, go nuts, you know? Speaking of the multi-source, nothing really seems too out there in terms of sources. I mean, you got... <sighs> Alright, here we go. Oni, Oni, Onion Plays. Please help. My point is, pretty much everything in this is stuff I've seen before. Also, can I just say, whenever the chorus deviates from anything Rick and Morty related... It's kind of jarring, because it's, it's like a sudden transition to something completely... Like, like a whole different remix, including the freestyles. Which, by the way, provide a lot to this remix. The snare can come down just a little bit. The first hi-hat is there. I can hear it without opening my third eye, but I still feel like it could come up some. And the Lisa chords are a little quiet, but not as quiet as the lead. I feel like that blends into the BGM a little too much. So, in conclusion for Who Stupid Now Bitch spotted a Happy Light DTGE remix featuring Multisource by Ahmed the Spartan. Audio, 6 out of 10. This is alright, pretty basic, but it's not terrible. The lead and first hi-hat are a little low, the chorus switches are weird, but overall this is okay. Visuals, 5 out of 10, default, okay. Creativeness, 7 out of 10. I've never heard of this bass before, so much points for that. Uh, I feel like the multi-source choices are pretty ordinary, but it's still cool. And we got another thumbnail. Just a border like Thario, but still two points. And no watermark. Total score, 20 out of 30. This is alright. That's the, that's the best way I can describe it. It's alright. A job well done. Ooh boy. Man, I forgot how much lol sus used to lol suck. <laughs> so this isn't good. It's it's pretty empty. Like there's no awesomeness, no chords or rhythm. Just I I can't even find anything that I enjoy, like a lead or drums or chorus. I mean, these each have their own issues that keep me from doing so. The chorus is a little too loud. The kick and snare are weak. I can't hear either hi hats, and the auto tune chorus is just why. It reminds me of the way X does auto-tune chorus. You can't just pitch shift wherever you want, it's a delicate thing to use. You have to know what you're doing with it, otherwise it sounds shit. Especially with the way Jario does it, because that's what these people are trying to emulate. But the thing is, in this case, less is more. It's only ever supposed to happen like once or twice in the whole remix, not for a whole frickin' bar. And the visuals, holy fucking shit. Like, did you even try? I think the bass, third lead, and drums are the only things that aren't completely borked. The epicness and second lead changes position when they flip, the lead and hit aren't flush against the edges, the madness chords overlap into the next space over, somehow, and there's even an admitted visual error in the madness. Oh yeah, and the second lead and bass are the same. So in conclusion for 150 subspecial Battle for BFDI Sparta Stark JE Remix by lolsus 4 u Audio... 3 out of 10. It's, it's really lackluster. Terribly unbalanced, Jario Tune Chorus isn't good, it's just really bland and empty. Visuals, 4 out of 10. It's default, but done really poorly. The dispositioning of the windows make it look really sloppy. And the fact that it happens so much in this, I have to take a point off. Creativeness, 3 out of 10. BFB is overused as fuck, and Stark JE is also pretty mainstream. There are sample repeats and not a whole lot is happening, and at least the patterns are on key. And there's no watermark or thumbnail. Total score, 10 out of 30. This really makes you want more out of it. 
In fact, it even feels unfinished, especially in the pre-madness chorus. Overall, a bit of a disappointment. Oh, tone again? Come on, people, I'm starting to see more lipstick than hair on Alex's ass by now. You're welcome for that visual. It's the least I can do, considering this has no visuals either! And at least with Chippy, man, he made a thumbnail-looking thing. This just has a zoom-in on a screen cap. And, you know, his excuse is that they got corrupted. Not, it doesn't matter, mate. If you actually cared, you would have redone them. I mean, it's not like you would have done anything beyond default anyway. What the fuck? He also says he was in the middle of Hurricane Florence when he made this. Mm, I'm gonna need to see some credentials for that one. But as for the remix itself, this actually ain't that bad. I especially like the vibrato and gross beat. That's pretty sick. I feel like the first chorus sample could have been different. Like, it could have been go instead of camp. Also, the first madness quote sampling could be a little better. Like, you could have done a double stutter instead. Just an idea. Um, the, uh, that one tone pattern, you know, the one that, uh, the da -na 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 pattern before the octave shift, you know what I'm talking about? That's really quiet. Now, I hate that shit, man. Like, how does a sample go quiet at certain places just because of the octave it's in? Like, how the... And furthermore, how does no one ever catch it and change it? Speaking of, the kick is also really quiet, too. Not as quiet as the autotune chorus, though. How dare you? It took me, like, three listens to realize it was even there. I can't tell if the snare is fake or not. It sounds double-layered. I wish I could confirm my suspicions, though. By the way, there's a Vegas click in the pre-madness chorus. Oh, and there's freaking cut off, like, wow. So, in conclusion for Is the Go Camping Sparta Tone Remix by XC, audio, 8 out of 10. Assuming this is just a baseline tone pitch package, this is pretty well balanced. It's quite enjoyable to listen to. Visuals, 0 out of 10. Come on, man. You could have done them over again. You could have. And you know what? I'll give it 1 out of 10. Something is better than literal nothing. Creativeness, 3 out of 10. Overused source and base. This is what gets the views, I suppose. And no thumbnail or watermark. SMH my head. Total score, 12 out of 30. Also, this got coppered, and I'm just sitting here like, how? Okay, so I wasn't expecting Zori sources again. I told you it's the most used source out there. But unlike GT's remix, we have the Plantarian base, which was probably only used for this here. And this could be my own delusions, but I feel like this base was only used to get a couple of brownie points from the host, because the host made this base, actually. Anyways, much points for the base, not so much for the source. And as for the remix itself, I think its biggest problem is the fact that the BGM is too loud because literally everything except the ARP and the awesomeness gets drowned out, which still gets drowned when it switches to the second pattern. But what about the second chorus sample at the epicness? That's probably the most inaudible part of this whole thing, and it's a chorus sample. You know, at least with the pitches, they have to stand out against the BGM. What's the chorus's excuse? And also, how the hell do you screw up such an easy autotune chorus? Like, it was literally right there for you. You didn't need to touch the first chorus sample at all, just the second one. Like, oh, oh my god, I am, I am so upset right now. Also, where did the lead go at the end? Is that what happens in the bass? I wish I could verify it, but true to the host's fashion, he done went and deleted the original upload. Speaking of tracks disappearing, this also has the issue of not following the BGM particularly in the Dun Dun and the Madness, when the ARP sample disappears, but the ARP track in the BGM keeps playing. By the way, the ending as a whole is really lacking. And the Dun Dun, especially in the chorus, it's really monotonous. Visually, my only complaint is the hi-hat. You could have censored it, really. But I guess it's a little unfair. If I have this right, when this source came out, Noah wasn't a remixer yet, and only really started about a year after its release. And this is only, what, what is it, his 15th remix? So I guess with that context, this isn't too bad, but I'm looking at these from an objective point of view, as they are. So, in conclusion for Zori13, this is Mr. Hapu, bought a Plantarium remix by Noah the Pro. Audio, 4 out of 10. It's just boring. Really, really boring. Visuals, 5 out of 10. Creativeness, 
3 out of 10. The base is unique, but I feel like there just isn't any real inspiration behind this. I know I said it's a beginner's remix, but it still feels... just spat out. Unfortunately, no watermark or thumbnail, so this is where it ends. Total score, 12 out of 30. I feel like this deserves a V2 really badly. Because this could be something, it just needs a little more to it. Thirty out of thirty. Fuck you. This is the best remix of 2018. You all suck. Uh, okay. I said I was gonna stop doing that. No, but seriously, this does have a lot of things wrong with it. But first, I know it looks like I put myself last because uh, I'm the last Spartan remixer. Uh, I'm last. But I'm telling you, the way I put these in order is 100% random. I swear to you, this is true. Because the way I did it was whenever I would move on to the next entry, I would search the hashtag and go to the next one up that I hadn't watched yet. Sometimes mine would be third or fifth to last, sometimes I'll be at the way bottom. Uh, when I went to review Noah's remix, mine was at the very bottom, so. Speaking of being at the very bottom, check out this description. Maybe I'll place last and enjoy the irony. Yeah, judging from the fact that I'm the only one here that hasn't broke past a 1k view mark, I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Like, look at this, man. I'm, I'm like, genuinely upset about this. What the hell? This is bullshit. Whatever, let's just get to the actual remix. So, the main complaints I got with this were the percussion and the lead's vibrato. Which, I get. I mean, the percussion didn't need to imitate the first hi-hat. It could've just followed the basic chorus pattern. And the vibrato definitely could've been turned down a little. Maybe you only use it when it goes from low to high and vice versa kind of thing. The other big issue with this, I feel, is this is clicky as hell. The kick is kinda like over EQ. Like, uh, it, it has that, that, uh, that 808 sound to it. I, I don't know how to explain it, but basically, it, it needs work. In terms of audibility, the rhythm and hi-hat need more volume in the chorus. The bass and kick only need a little bit more to them overall. Also, for the bass, when it does that typical second bass pattern, you know what I'm talking about? Apparently, there's fade out, and I wouldn't have realized that if I didn't check the Vage file, so there needs to be a visual indicator on that. Oh, and the lead goes quiet at the ending. Also, more on the bass, actually. It's freaking the wrong size, how? And speaking of visuals, I don't really like the leads all that much, because sometimes it looks like it's not synced with the audio. Like, it's, it's hard to tell when the spinning changes directions. Uh, for sources, there are four of them, three of which are slightly overused, so... I don't know, I think I'll just take one collective point off for that. But we do have the Megrim UE bass, which is an iteration of Megrim, I'll give you that. But this isn't Megrim. This is Mugram UE, which I'm pretty confident was only ever used for this remix. And I'm double confident that there won't be any more remixes with it because the upload of this was also freaking deleted. Like, can you people stop deleting your shit? It's fucking annoying. Anyways, my last complaint with this is there's no custom pitches. Now let's talk about the good things with this. We got auto-tune chorus, very good. Part for the chorus with me, honestly. We have another symbol, been a while since we've seen one of those. And I'm giving myself all the creativity points for using Vocadex because you people are sticklers for Melodyne. Don't give nothing new a chance. Vocadex is valid, damn it. I'm really proud of the stutter at the beginning and the way the perk and hi hat temporarily stop at the it sucks part. And the 30 second note snare rolls is very nice. So, in conclusion, for Uno and Friends Sparta Megrum UE remix by TLSR, audio 6 out of 10. It's alright, it's passable. I, I don't know why, but all of Telesaro's non-V2 remixes suck. Like, like anything that wasn't based off of something else just has a whole bunch of flaws in it. It's really weird. Visuals, 8 out of 10. Yet another awesome visual style that even the creator no longer uses. This is bullshit. Y'all need to stick to your origins. All this new shit y'all keep trying to do, it ain't working. Creativeness, 9 out of 10. Go fuck yourself. No, no, not 9. Uh... Mugum UE is unique. The sources, not so much. Nothing custom. Percussion hi hat thing. Mm, 5 out of 10. No, 6 out of 10. No, 5, 5 or 6. Which is better? See, this is why I need them decimals. <sighs> Fuck it. 6 out of 10. Screw it. I don't know. And I get 4 points for the thumbnail and watermark. Professionals have standards! Even though this is like the sloppiest thumbnail ever. Like, look at this. There's so much shit going on. 
total score, 24 out of 30. Though, even I feel I shouldn't have this high of a score, even though most of it comes from the bonus points and the visuals. I still feel like this should be at most in the teens. And that's everything! So what did we learn today in this marvelous adventure of a review? That you all need to work on your drums, Jesus! So who do I consider to be the winner of this contest? Uh, well, score-wise, it would be a tie between me and Enfi, but that's just because we have thumbnails and watermarks. Uh, I guess it. I guess it would have to be the Nos remix followed by the Vector remix. I enjoy both of these immensely, but Nos just edges out Vector due to the clicks. So yeah, I declare Nos the winner of the contest, in my opinion. But anyways, yeah, I was just feeling nostalgic, so I made this because while late 2018 wasn't a good time for me, a lot of good things were still made during that period. It was pretty cool. This being one of them. You know, this is something that we can look back and reminisce on. Just this, this one-time thing that a couple of us got to enjoy, and we can really embrace the fact that something like this could never happen again. Because, you know, when someone comes along and tries to make a cash grab of a sequel or something good, it's just not the same. It doesn't have the same charm to it. And sometimes, it can even ruin the original just by existing. All I'm saying is, it would really be a shame if if this got a sequel just because it happened and someone was just trying to capitalize on nostalgia or something along those lines of ingenuity. Because there are things in life that just don't need a sequel. They really don't. But anyways guys, that's gonna do it for me. I hope you enjoyed this review. Keep in mind, this is just my opinion. The only difference between this and a comment is that I actually explained why I thought something was bad. So thanks for watching, leave a like on my disabled ratings, <laughs> and I will see you in the next life. The last Spartan Remixer, hashtag Beast Motes SR Contest, forever. <laughs>